soul is the anchor in the Lord. Oh, I realize that sometimes in my life we're going to be tossed by the winds and the currents that seem oh so Word of God, I, I, I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and I move up despite the tides. But if the storms, if the storms, if they don't cease, soul is anchored in his word mm. let me tell you this one thing the billows may roll and breakers may dash I, I shall not sway because he holds me fast and troubles will come day or night but I'm a child of God and I feel alright in my soul my, my soul I'm a child of God and I feel alright in my soul my, my soul My soul has been naked Thank you Lord My My soul my soul has been anchored in the, the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me from myself, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Mm. Anybody glad to be anchored? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Feel your presence, God. We thank yes, you. Thank you, Lord. You have made so many, many ways. And so, God, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. God. Somebody needs you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, 
I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are a way maker. grace and your mercy and touching us with your divine finger this morning and allowing us to rise to see a day that we have never seen. We just thank you for allowing us to be here to bring our worship today before your throne. And Father, we just thank you for everyone that is assembled here, every man, woman, boy, and child. Father, we just thank you most of all for Jesus this day who gave his life in the place of ours, who shed his blood for the remission of our sins, who died and rose again and claimed all power and given us a right to the tree of life. We ask you this day, God, to be with those who are breathed at this time. Those who have lost loved ones that you have called home. We pray, oh God, that you will comfort them. Let their sun shine once again in their home. Help us to give words of comfort to help them through this time of bereavement. And Father, we ask us blessing upon this service this morning. We ask you to bless our pastor as he stands before us and delivers your word. And we pray that the word this morning will change lives, cause us to be better in the future than we have been in the past. And we just ask for your strength and your grace. Forgive us of our sins if we are falling short. And we pray that this day may be a great day and you get the glory. Yes. The blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You are healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Moving in this place. I worship you.
Central Point family, friends, and welcome guests. Happy Easter! These are your Central Point announcements for Sunday, March 31st. What's up, y'all? My name is Chase, and I'm part of Generation X at Central Point Church of Christ. I just wanted to invite all you from pre-K to 12th grade and college freshmen to our Youth Weekend Extravaganza. June 7th through the 9th, here at Central Point, I cannot tell you how excited I am. You gotta bring everybody that you know you got to bring your friends, you got to bring your brother, you got to bring your sister, because it's going to be very enlightening here at Central Point. Text YWX24 to 972-426-7755 to register now or stop by the Agape Bookstore for more information. Not registering is not an option. You're on your phone now, so what are you waiting on? Registration costs $20 for all activities at the church and $75 including Six Flags. On time, registration ends May 5th. You guys do not want to miss it. See y'all there. Eastside Church of Christ in Austin, Texas, is having their Youth Day on Saturday, April 6th. Registration is $10. Youth 6th grade and above interested in attending can register by texting ESDY24 to 972-426-7755 or stop by the bookstore. Today is your last day to register to attend. Generation Next Youth Sneaker Ball is on Friday, April 5th at 7 p.m. Please register by texting YSB24 to 972-426-7755 or stop by the bookstore. Today, March 31st, is your last day to register to attend. If you have any questions, please see Jasmine Simmons or Charlotte Lee. Hey. Hey, friend. Hey, girl. What are you doing on April 13th? What's happening on April 13th? Well, I'm going to the Unique Breakfast. Um, what's the Unique Breakfast? The Unique Life Group is hosting a breakfast for young girls grades 6th through 12th to empower and nurture your inner self in Christ. There will be food, fellowship, and an opportunity to meet other young ladies of the point. Sounds interesting. I'd like to come. Cool. The Unique Breakfast will be held on Saturday, April 13th in the Celebration Hall from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Cool. I'll meet you there. Good. Can't wait to see you there. Wait, what's the date and the time again? Friend, Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. in the Celebration Hall. I got it. Thanks, friend. You're welcome. Don't miss out on this amazing treat. If you want to know more information or to sign up, please stop by the Welcome Center. See, see you there! there. Central Point family, it's time to check in. Please take out your phones and text the word HERE to 972-426-7755. Ladies, ladies, ladies. You do not want to miss this year's women's conference. We are so excited. Our conference speaker will be the renowned Mickey Taylor. Mickey is the iconic Essence Magazine editor at large. She is an empowerment speaker, media personality, leading beauty authority, and influencer of women of color. She is a member of the Newark Church of Christ in Newark, New Jersey. Our theme for the conference is Healing the Inner Girl. The dates are August 9th through 11th, 2024. Get registered today. The cost is $50 for general admission and $65 for VIP admission. To register, text WC24 to 972-426-7755 or use the following QR code. 
Central Point family, please save the dates of April 20th and 21st for our GP Health Community Involvement Weekend. Saturday will be jam-packed with workshop sessions and vendors on topics of affordable car loans, home financing, life insurance options, resume writing, interviewing tips, and much, much more. Sunday will be our annual church picnic and fellowship where we will have food, fun, and games. Oh, and don't forget the Bake Off contest. You don't want to miss this weekend. The food pantry items for the month of April are spaghetti sauce, peanut butter, and jelly. Please join God's Purposeful Women as we kick off the month on Saturday, April 7th, 2024 at 9 a.m. for Battle Plan for Prayer. We will be discussing types of prayer. Please see the Gazette for Zoom details. And for more information, please see Sister Nefertiria Johnson. The Evangelism Ministry, Soul Seekers for Christ, is gearing up for another community outreach giveaway. We are asking the congregation to donate or purchase t-shirts, tank tops, various sizes, socks, rain ponchos, toiletry items such as toothpaste, toothbrushes, baby wipes, mouthwash, unscented liquid soaps, deodorant, lip balm, gum and peppermints. Our donation drive will begin this week until Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Distribution will be Saturday, May 4th at 10 a.m. We are asking that these items be new. However, we are in need of gently used men clothing and shoe sizes 10 and up. There will be labeled collection boxes in various stations in the foray. So many were blessed by your donations before. So let's show God again to those who are less fortunate. If you have any questions or concerns, please see Minister DeMarco Owens. These have been your Central Point announcements. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, TikTok, and our website at centralpointchurch.org. Our sins away. Are you happy to be here this morning? Let's give the Lord a hand. Just waking us up today. He didn't have to do that. Praise God. Giving us another chance to worship him. I'm excited. I'm glad to be here this morning. I hope you are too. Yes, I hope you are too. I hope you are too. I want to thank, uh, first of all, Minister Owens last week while I was out doing an outstanding job. We always, always thank him for, <clears throat> for all that he does and, and, uh, and, and just standing in and being, and being who he is. So it's, uh, we're very appreciative for him. If you, if you missed uh, Good Friday, um, I feel bad for you. I, I do. I do. I feel bad for you. We had such an awesome time on Friday, didn't we? Oh, man. Oh, such a fantastic time this, this past Friday. We just thank everybody who participated. It was, an, it, was a, it was a mind. It was just an awesome day. Just an awesome day. So we're just thankful uh, for that. I also <clears throat> want to encourage us to continue to keep uh, Sister Coy and her family in our prayers funeralized her son on yesterday and so uh, let's say uh, you know those days after and uh, so just continue to keep her lifted up and uh, her entire family uh, pray for him uh, it's 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 just that that whole after the fact and uh, you know it's she needs the encouragement and so I just want you to I just want you to do that a um, couple of announcements that were not in the in the uh, video announcements there will be Easter bags for the children in the, uh, in the bookstore, in the bookstore right after church. So all of our, all of our babies are welcome to go in there and get, and get bags. 
Also, Man Up will meet this coming Saturday morning at 6.30, first Saturday in April. Man Up will gather, so we want to all see all of our men this coming Saturday morning. Man Up this coming Saturday <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Praise God. And let's, y'all give our praise team a hand. I want you to give our praise team a hand. <clears throat> they have been, they've been on tour. <laughs> Many of them were in, in, in California a week before last, and then uh, Mike was in Houston with me last Sunday, and then they, they sang in Fort Worth last, this past Monday. They were with me at Cedar Crest with our priest on Wednesday. They sung Friday. They sung at the funeral yesterday. And then they're doing what they're doing this morning. Y'all give them a hand. I, I, uh, I appreciate y'all. I really do. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. They got that on top of lives and jobs and families and all of that kind of stuff. So don't take that for granted, all right? And then, and then be able to do what they do. You understand what I'm saying? So, so praise God. We are, we are thankful. We are thankful for them. Uh, the fifth Sunday today, so no kingdom kids today. So you got to keep your own babies. It's, I mean, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That make you appreciate the ones that, that watch them in the back, right? <clears throat> praise God. Praise God. Uh, first time visitors, if this is your first time visiting with us, if you're comfortable standing, we want you to stand. If not, just put your hand in the air and let us see you. First time visitors. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. He has given it to you as a gift. It is full of promise and potential. Your heavenly father knew you before the beginning of time. He wove you together in your mother's womb. He watched over you, cared for you, guided you every step of your journey, moment by moment, day by day, all leading up to this day, this day that the Lord has made. Come and celebrate it with us. Welcome to today. Welcome to church. We want to thank you so much for being our special guest today. You made our day by choosing to worship with us. And any time that you are again in this area, we would love for you to come back by and worship with us again. All right? Y'all give our visitors a love deposit. Let's now prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the Lord's Supper, and then to give of our means, Brother Barnes. I usually don't get nervous, <laughs> but um, I was going to read the scripture and just take my seat, but I asked pastor's permission to officiate the Lord's Supper with this expression for those of you who may be <clears throat> struggling with your communion. I witnessed something last week, and it concerned me about communion. So I ask that you bear with me. I'll be timely with the offering. Uh, but bear with me a few minutes, and I ask God's Spirit to help me through this. As we take uh, this communion this morning, I want you to remember There's a truth in this bread and in this cup. But there's also a truth about this table. If I were a Jew living in the time of the Old Testament, there is no doubt that I would eat the Passover in worthiness, both spiritually 
and historically. And as a Jew, it was commanded that I sit at this table and listen to our historic deliverance and how God led us out of the land of Egypt and to observe his truth and prophecy and in monuments and stones of remembrance and to disregard any attempt to rewrite our place in God's plan of redemption. But as Christians at this communion table, we are charged to do the same. For without truth, we are forced to rely on certain pulpit messaging, motion pictures, and even selfies. You see, a selfie is a picture taken to create your own narrative or to promote an experience in life that is in your favor. For those of you who are old enough to remember the coffee table in your living room, there was a large book that sat on that table. It was the Bible. And the reason why it was so thick it was full of selfies, pictures of angels, Adam and Eve, Moses and the burning bush, the Passover, and even the Lord's Supper. But out of all the people that were in those selfies, there was no one who had your skin pigmentation. So even though you don't have any selfies, it is our responsibility that you take this communion in full assurance of faith. You were at this table in both dispensations of this Bible. In the book of Exodus, God initiated the first Passover in the land of Egypt. And Egypt is in Africa, right. not America. Right. So you eat this bread and you drink this cup in worthiness, both spiritually and historically. And you disregard all of those selfies. In the book of Luke, there were 12 disciples at the Lord's table. One of those disciples was a Canaanite named Simon, a black man. He was there not by constitution, but by the restitution of Jesus Christ. So you eat this bread and you drink this cup in worthiness, both spiritually and historically. And you disregard all of those selfies. I say this at this table, not to undermine the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But I say this because there is a stumbling block that is set before this generation. Causing them to question, is Jesus the one or should we look for another? You are not an afterthought of God. You're not some hidden figure. You're not one-fifth of a Christian. You are at this table from the very beginning. So you eat this bread. And you drink this cup in worthiness. Both spiritually and historically. And you disregard all of those selfies. Let us bow. Our Father and our God, we come to you this morning thanking you for this table.
We thank you for the bread, which is Jesus' broken body. We thank you for the cup, which is his shed blood. We just ask that you allow us to take it in the mindset of worthiness, spiritually, and historically. The blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It was on the cross of Calvary. 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 It was on the cross of Calvary. Calvary. anyone been overlooked? It's offering time. We're getting ready to pass the basket. God doesn't want Easter eggs. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered, that there be no gathering. When I come, let us bow. Our Father, we thank you for this offering that is about to be taken up. We pray that it is used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It was on the cross of
questions. Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear the hammer? Can you hear it?
been for Calvary. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Ah. If it had not been for the shedding of his blood, Thank you, Jesus. piercing of his body, Nailing of his hands, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So it's now our, our duty. We've yes. been commissioned and commanded to tell this whole world about Calvary, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. must tell the whole world about a risen Savior. Is that right? Come on. Mm -hmm. We overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. And the word. And the word. Of our testimony. Come on. I can't be silent. I can't be silent. We gotta share it. Share it. So excuse So excuse if I get me If I get too loud I gotta share What the Lord has done for me yeah. I gotta tell Because you I've seen too much I've seen too much And I've been through too much Been through too much He's done so much for me so much. That's why we gotta testify I gotta testify Because I've seen too much Give it honor to God. Give it honor to Who is God. the head of my Who is the head of my We life. gotta thank him for I our wanna strength. Thank him for and my stepping strength. in on stepping in so on So excuse so me. Excuse if I get too loud. If I get too loud. I wanna share what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. I gotta testify. Because I The Lord has done so much. He's done so much. We must testify. I gotta testify. Because I've seen too much. I've seen too much. Been through too much. Been through too much. He's done so much. He's done so much. Say I gotta testify. Now y'all say. Say I've seen too much. I've seen too much. Been through too much. He's done so much. Yeah. 
our commission isn't it come and see but not just come and see then go and tell right praise God praise God praise God turn with me to uh, we've been in we've been in Genesis since the beginning of the year <clears throat> turn with me to Genesis chapter 22 Genesis chapter 22 <clears throat> Very familiar story, but allow me to, to read it anyway. <clears throat> Beginning with verse number one, New King James Version reads like this. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar of off. <clears throat> and Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. <clears throat> so Abraham took the wood burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together but Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and he said my father and he said here I am my son then he said look the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to a place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
But, <laughs> but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. <clears throat> so he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. A subject comes out of that 14th verse. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. That's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. You may be seated. <clears throat> The Lord will provide. Imagine with me Abraham getting a knock on his front door. And he goes to the door and finds a courier there who has an envelope in his hand. And he says to him, are you Abraham? Abraham responds by saying, yes, it's me. He gives him the envelope and he says, you've been served. He opens the envelope and finds a subpoena to appear in court. He looks at the name on the subpoena and it says, Father of Faith. Abraham's faith has been ordered to appear on trial. Chapter 22 starts out by saying, now it came to pass after these things. After what things? Back in chapter 12, God told him to leave his country and his kindred and go to a place that I'll tell you of. But he made the mistake of taking his nephew Lot with him and they, they get into it along the journey and they end up parting ways. But in chapter 14, a war breaks out and four kings are fighting five kings and Lot is caught in the middle of the battle and he's captured. Uh -huh. Abraham and his 300 soldiers insert themselves in the midst of the war in order to rescue Lot from captivity. Then chapter 15, the Lord makes a covenant with Abraham and he tells him that I'll make you the father of many nations and you'll have descendants as numerous as the stars. But by chapter 16, several years have passed and, and still has no children. So his wife Sarah comes up with this plan for him to sleep with her maid Hagar and have a child with her which produced Ishmael. Y'all with me? Chapter 20, there's a famine that causes Abraham to flee to Egypt, and it's there that he lies to the king about his wife being his sister, which caused all of these problems for Abimelech and his household with God. But by chapter 21, God's original promise to Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son of their own comes to fruition and she gives birth to Isaac whose name means laughter because they laughed at God when, when he told them that they would have a child because they were old. But by the end of the chapter, Sarah convinces Abraham to put his baby and his baby's mama out of the house which he does without providing adequate child support. They wind up in the desert. They run out of food and water, and Hagar gives up, and she's preparing to die. But, but right before she gave up, that's when God showed up. He showed up and provided them with a well of water to quench their dry circumstance. So when chapter 22 starts out by saying, after these things, these are the things that it's talking about. It says, after these things, God tested Abraham. God calls him and he says, 
Abraham? Abraham says, here I am. God says, take your son, your only son, the one you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him up as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'll show you. Yeah. Notice with me. Notice, notice the drama and the, the weight that God puts on it because he calls Isaac by three different ways in one verse. Take your son, your only son, the one whom you love, and offer him as a sacrifice. Abraham's in court. His, his faith is on trial. He's been called the father of faith on credit, but now he's got to earn that title through, through passing this faith test. And so the first thing that the Lord provides here in Genesis chapter 22 is he provides an object for testing. That's verses 1 and 2. Abraham is enrolled in the school of faith. He's had a, he's had a lot of tests along his journey. And when you examine his story, you find out that he doesn't always test well. He, he hasn't always done so good test-wise up until this point. He, he failed the family test because God told him in chapter 12 to leave his extended family behind, but he took his nephew Lot with him. He failed the famine test because he doubted God and went down to Egypt for help, looking for help instead of trusting God to take care of him. He failed the field test when he lied to the king about his wife being his sister. He failed the fatherhood test because he let Sarah talk him into running ahead of God and having a child with Hagar only to end up putting both of them out of the house in chapter 21. See, that's why you ought not get down on yourself because you don't pass every test. Listen to me. In life, we don't pass every test. Moses passed the Red Sea test, but he flunked the rock test. David passed the Goliath test, but he flunked the Bathsheba test. Some of you have passed the stealing and killing test, but you flunked the gossiping and backbiting test because we don't pass every test. But thank God today that he, he gives makeup exams. <laughs> he, he, he's a God that allows you to, to retest. Aren't you glad today that he's a God of another chance? I mean, anybody in here can think about all of the chances that you've messed up and all of the tests that you failed, but God gave you another chance? No, 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 no. But God really, I mean, he really, he gave you, an, I didn't say a second chance because that was messed up a long time ago. God gave you another chance. God God gives, God gives Abraham another chance. He, he, he gives him a final exam. This is a, this is a comprehensive exam that, that covers everything he's learned about God up until this point. God's been teaching him since chapter 12. And you know from being in school that whatever a teacher teaches, a teacher tests. And so he's been teaching him about faith. So now he tests his faith. Yes. Abraham, take your son. Take, take, take the one whom you've waited decades for, the, the one whom you prayed for and fasted for and pleaded with me for. I want you to take him, Isaac, and give him back to me as a burnt offering. Right. Abraham, it's testing time. Yes, take, take Isaac. Isaac's name means laughter because you and your wife laughed at me when I told you that I could give you a child in your old age. His name means laughter, but this is no laughing matter. I, I want you to take that thing, God says, that you love the most because I need to see if there's anything in your life that competes with me for first place. Abraham, who do you who do you love the most? Do you love him? Or do you love me? Do you love the gift? Or do you love the giver of the gift? 
What means more to you, Abraham? My, my presence or my presence? And listen, I think I need to tell you that you too ought to evaluate your priorities because God won't accept second place to anything else in your life. So maybe this morning I need to ask you too, what's your Isaac? What, what, if anything, competes with God for first place in your heart? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is it your, is it your job? Is it your status? Is it your, is it your money? Is it your reputation? Is it your social circle? What is it? What is that thing that you find yourself putting before God? Because, listen, God will never trust you with blessings until he can test you with burdens. He will, he will question and demand an answer as to what or who is first place in your life. The Lord, the Lord provides an object of testing, but then <clears throat> and he also, secondly, he provides the option of trusting. Go back with me to verse number three. I want to read this again. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and he said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. And since a faith that cannot be tested can't be trusted, God tests Abraham's faith and he passed the test. Abraham's faith has graduated to trust. And listen, that's significant because he couldn't open the Bible as we can today and read how the story was going to end. He had to just trust that the God who had never before asked for human sacrifice had some reason for asking him to kill the very son that he'd waited all these years for and the son in which whom the promise of this great nation was supposed to come from. We don't get to read it because it's not written. And I, and I think we, we tend to forget sometimes that our biblical heroes were human. But can you imagine the questions that Abraham had? Can you imagine the agony in those questions? How is the great nation going to grow if I kill the seed? How can God keep his promise if I kill the very one that the promise is supposed to come through? I left my two servants down at the bottom of the hill. What am I going to tell them when I'm the only one that comes back? Okay, what am I going to tell his mama when we get back home? But with all of that, right after the command, verse number three says this. It says, Abraham got up and went, told his two servants, y'all stay here at the bottom of the hill. The boy and I will go and we'll worship and we'll come back. God tests Abraham and tells him to sacrifice his son. And, and Abraham calls the sacrifice of Isaac worship. First thing that tells me is that when God is testing me, that's not an excuse to stay away from worship. 
See, even in my test, I owe God a yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yeah. God, I, I owe God a yes. He sees the sacrifice of what he loves most as worship. Because until you can lay your Isaac down, whatever or whoever your Isaac is, until you can lay it down, you're not ready for real worship. Because real worship requires defining what you ascribe the most worth and value to. True worship holds nothing back from God. God said, Abraham, if you love me like you say you love me, give me that which you cherish most. Give me your son. And what I love, and what I love about this part of the story is that obviously Abraham had already taught his son about worship. They, they'd been to worship before. He, he'd watched his father build an altar and sacrifice to God before this moment. How you know it? Isaac told me. <laughs> he, he said in verse number seven, Father, I, I see the wood. I see the fire. But, but where is the lamb? We've, we've done this before and something is noticeably missing. You taught me that you never come to worship God empty handed. No, you said God's been too good for that. You, you taught me that you always give back to the God that's given everything to you. You taught me that worship was it was planned. Your, your gift, your offering was, was planned. You, you don't just show up and, and decide on the fly what you're going to give God. No, you, you plan to. I, I planned my offering this morning. I planned my praise this morning. I, I, I planned to get loud. I played. It doesn't matter who showed up. I planned to give him loud praise. I planned to give him glory. I planned to raise my hands. I planned to shout hallelujah. I planned to say thank you, Jesus. I, I thought about running. I, 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 I did. I, I, I didn't feel I thought about it. I, I planned to give God glory today. I planned it. Isaac asked his father, he said, he said, where's the, where's the sacrifice? Abraham, knowing what God told him to do, he responds by saying, the Lord will provide. He takes Isaac and he lays him down on the altar. And listen, these, these, these uh, biblical, these children's biblical movies and, and stories and books and all are they're good. They're a good way for them to learn biblical stories, but, but they've, they've done an injustice to scene setting and the understanding of, of the severity of the faith displayed in this text. Because they would have you to believe that, that this was some little boy that Abraham laid on the altar. But, but at the time of this occurrence, biblical scholars tell us that Isaac was somewhere between 18 and 30 years of age. Well, listen, he's old enough and strong enough to carry the wood up the mountain. And if Abraham, we know Abraham was 100 when he was born. So if Isaac is 18, Abraham is 118. And it, and it stands to reason that an 18-year-old could get away from a 118-year-old had he wanted to. But Isaac willingly lays down on the altar. And he does so because of the faith that he had in his father's devotion to God. See, you can't fake this. You, you can't just come to church on Sunday and then leave God here and... And don't bother with God all the rest of the week. And then expect your child to lay down on the altar because they won't have that kind of faith. See, they know when this is real for you. You can't fake faith. They watch everything you do. They, they know when you're just putting on at church because they know who you are at home. Abraham, Abraham said to his servants, he said, y'all stay here. Me and, 
me and my son are going to, to worship. And, and watch this. We will come back to you. He talks here, faith talk to his own self. He says, he says, we will worship and then we will come back to you. And I asked Abraham, I said, Abraham, who's the we? He said, him and Isaac. We will come back. Not might or hope or we, we will come back. Abraham, what, what makes you believe that both of you will come back? Because, because God had promised that through this son, he would, he would have offspring as numerous as the stars and, and all the nations would be blessed through Isaac. And God is not a man that he can lie. And so Abraham is standing on the promise of God. And listen, I believe he resolved in his heart that, that if God told me to do it, then God already knows how he's going to accomplish his own will. Here it is. If it's God's will, then it's God's bill. That helped me. That helped me. If it's God's will, then it's God's bill. God's got to find a way to make it come true if God told me to do it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute because I was, I was still... I was still struggling with this. Abraham, God said, God said, kill him. So how do you know that we will come back? But then I read what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19, that by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, in whom the promise was called concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Abraham, this is Genesis 22. You've never seen resurrection from the dead happen before. Or have you? Perhaps, perhaps Abraham said to himself that this boy's name means laughter because we, we laughed at God when he told us that we'd have a son in our old age. And, and we laughed at him because I was 100 and Sarah was 90. Her womb was dead. Isaac came alive from a dead womb. And if God brought him out of something dead before, then, then surely he could do it again. He believed that if God could bring him from a dead womb, he could bring him from a dead tomb. If he's done it before, then he can, then he can do it again. Anybody, anybody know that if he's done it before, he can do it again? If he's healed you before, he can do it again. If he's paid bills before, he can do it again. If he's kept your marriage together before, he can do it again. Your faith has to be strong enough that you come to a place in your Christian walk that you say that I don't know how he's going to fix it. I don't know when he's going to fix it. All I know, hey, all I know is that if God said it, so, so, so Abraham, Abraham tells Isaac that, that God will provide, 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 <clears throat> comes from, it comes from two Latin words. Pro and video. To see, that's video. And pro or pre, that means before. So to provide means to see beforehand. It means to pre-see. And watch this. This is beautiful because God's 
prevision is the same as his provision. He's so much God that the need that he supplies, he saw it before you ever needed it. Is this helping anybody? What he, what he pre-sees, he's already provided. So they get up on the mountain. Abraham lays Isaac down on the altar. He raises the knife to slay his son. And, and as he's on his way down with the blade, verse number 11 says, the angel of the Lord shouts from heaven and says, Abraham. Abraham stops and he says, here I am. The angel says, do no harm to the boy. Because now I know. And listen, some things you have to just know. I know that my redeemer lives. Some things you have to just know. I know that if this earthly house be destroyed, I got another building, a house not made with hands, eternal in the, some things you got to just know. I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Some things you got to just know. He says, he says, I know. And truth is, God already knew he wanted Abraham to know. That's all. I love this. Watch this. In, 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 verse, in, verse, in verse 1, King James Version, when God calls his name, Abraham responds by saying, here I am. But when God calls, his, when God calls him again in verse number 11, when he has a knife, to his son's throat. When God calls him there, the King James Version says he responded by saying, not here I am, but here am I. How far you got to travel to go from here I am to here am I? What's the distance between here I am and here am I? See, here I am is your geographical location, but, but here, I, here am I is your spiritual condition. And it takes some traveling to go from here I am to Lord, whatever you want, wherever you want me to go, here am I, God Send me, use me, here am I. Because when God calls him, he's not looking for information. He knows where he is. He's not asking about his geographical location. He's asking about his spiritual condition. Do you trust me? Because if you trust and never doubt, somebody here know he'll surely, he'll surely bring you out. The Lord will provide, I'm done. The Lord will provide an object of testing. He'll provide the option of trusting. But then he provides, last thing, the opportunity for thanking. God, God stopped him from sacrificing Isaac. And in verse number 13, it says, Then Abraham lifted up his eyes, and there behold and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Now, I don't know if the ram was already there and he was just perhaps the quietest ram in history. <laughs> or, and this is the idea that I ascribe to, or... Because you do know that there are two sides to every mountain. And, and so I believe that while Abraham was coming up one side of the mountain, God and the ram were coming up the, the other side of the mountain. Because something had to die as a sacrifice. So, so the ram, this, this innocent ram, served as a sacrificial substitute for his son. Abraham coming up this side of the mountain with a question. God 
coming up this side of the mountain with an answer. God was both tester and provider. He was the teacher, but he was the teacher that gave him the answer to the test. And this is where I started shouting in my own office. Because in John chapter 8, verse number 56, Jesus says that Abraham saw my day. What did he see? Well, I believe that, that if God could do all of this, then God could allow Abraham to precede Calvary. Abraham was not wrong when he said the Lord would provide a lamb. Because John would say years later, now behold the lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. See, this wasn't really about Abraham and Isaac. This was a dress rehearsal. This was a trial run. Because when you compare Mount Moriah and Mount Calvary, there's so many sacrificial similarities. First of all, Mount Moriah and Mount Calvary are just a few hundred yards from each other. You can see one from the other one. Sacrificial similarities. Both Abraham and God sacrificed their only son. Both of those sons carried wood up a hill. In, in both situations, an innocent lamb died as a sacrifice. In both situations, God provided the sacrifice. And I think that the Lord provided here because Abraham produced. See, he produced faith. He produced trust. He produced worship. And he worshiped before the ram. See, anybody can worship after the ram. Anybody can worship after God does what you want God to do. Anybody can worship after God pays the bill and after God raises you back up on your feet. Anybody can worship after the ramp. But I, Abraham worshiped before the ramp. And can you, can you imagine the worship that took place after this? I mean, how thankful Abraham must have been when he came down off that mountain. And I imagine he came down the mountain and he, he still had tears in his eyes. And his servants, his two servants, remember, they were down at the bottom of the hill. And, and can't you see them looking at him saying, what happened to you? Why you look like that? I mean, what, what happened? Because his servants, not knowing why he was worshiping the way that he did, but... But they didn't know what happened on that mountain. Yeah. See, that's why you got to be careful judging other people's worship because you don't know what happened to them at Moriah. Yeah. See, when I raise my hands, you don't know why I'm raising my hands. You don't know. You don't know all the times I wanted to give up. You don't know how far down I've been. You don't know all the tears that I've cried. You don't know why I'm. I was at a, I was at a, I was at a, uh, um, I was at a gym recently with Rome. He was playing, and, and, and I went to the bathroom, and it was one of those older restrooms, that, and uh, washed my hands, and, and, and one of those older towel dispensers, and, and you know how they have those where you have to put your hand up, and, and you got to, the, the towel is supposed to come down, and it's, and, and it's one of them old ones, and they never work anyway, and you have to try and catch it, you try to, you start doing this and you're trying to put, you put your hands up and you're trying to wait on the towel to come down and I, and it was alright when I was in there by myself because wasn't nobody, I, was, I looked you know <laughs> but as I was doing it, somebody else walked in and I know I look real crazy doing this but 
but they didn't know I was doing this because I was trying to, I was waiting on something to come down. I, I, I was doing, I was doing this, but they didn't know, but I, I was doing it because I was waiting. I was waiting on something to come down. Anybody here know that times I'm, I'm raising my hands. I, because you do know when praises go up, blessings come down. When, when, when praise goes up, blessings come down. When, when worship goes up, God provides. It comes down. So I, I'm, I'm, that's what, that's what, I'm done. I'm trying to hold myself because I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm about to slip into my happy place. <laughs> um, that's what, that's what happened with Abraham because um, when he, when he worshiped before the ram, that's why God sent the ram. You gotta, you gotta know that it's it's. This was just a a, a, a practice run for what was coming soon. Okay, okay, I'm done for real. We we were headed we were headed uh, a couple weeks ago. We were headed to San Antonio for the uh, boys state championship high school basketball tournament, and you know. When traveling, especially like from here to Houston or something, when, when traveling, one of the joys of traveling is being able to stop at Bucky's. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the cleanliness of the facilities. It, it's, the, it's that chopped beef sandwich. It, it's, that, it's, it's the fact that you can find everything you possibly ever wanted. Everything you desire there. So we, we, were, we were traveling to San Antonio from here, and, and uh, they're popping up everywhere now. And they're getting one in Hillsboro. And so 20 miles outside of Hillsboro, on both sides of the highway, there were billboards the whole way to Hill. 20 miles. It said, coming soon. We're excited, aren't you? We can't wait to see you. Coming soon. Y'all, that's all this was. Isaac was a foreshadowing of Jesus. Because coming soon would be Abraham's great, 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 great. Excuse me, I got to get through 42 generations. Great, 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 great. Great, 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 great grandson. Jesus, who would hang on a hill called Calvary for your sins and mine. He would take our sins up on the cross and allow them to crucify him there. So that you and I might have the right to eternal life. He hung there, bled, and died on Friday. Stayed dead all day Saturday. But it's Easter, so you know I got to do it. Early. <laughs> Early Sunday morning, he, he got up with all power in his hand. And because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living. Because he lives. And listen, I, I, I want to encourage somebody today that, that when, when life starts life in, that, that you have to know that the God that you serve can provide. Now, I know you didn't need me to tell you that, but maybe you needed me to remind you of that. That the Lord will provide, but you have to ask yourself, what's your Isaac? What is it? What, what, what is it that you put ahead of God? And whatever that is, are you willing to lay it on the altar? 
Ah, oh, that's, 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 that's not a rhetorical question. That's a question you got to answer within your own heart. Are, are, are you willing to lay whatever it is on the altar? Because this trust, this trust thing is an all or nothing thing. You got to be able to say, God, I trust you with everything. You got to be willing. Come on, y'all. We got, you got to be willing to lay it on the altar. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm done. Um, if, if you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, make today be your day that you give your life to him. That you, you submit your whole being to him. Confess Jesus to be the Son of God. Repent of your past. We'll take you this morning, baptize you in water for the remission of your sins. If you're in this room today, and you've never been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, I want you to come. Come on. What a wonderful day to give your life to him. If you're here and you need prayer, you need strength, you need encouragement, we invite you to come. Listen, if you're here and you don't have a church home, we want you to know we'd love to have you become a part of the Central Point family. Step out in the aisles, come down front, place your membership here with us. We'd love to have you. Come on. Whatever it is, let's sing. Let's sing and encourage somebody. God, God bless you as you're coming. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, somebody else. If you're in the balcony, you can come down either side of the stairs. We're waiting on you. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Bless you. Bless you. You can. Come on. Come on. We're waiting. We're waiting. Come on. Oh, be perfect. Perfectly. You gotta be willing. Whatever it is, you gotta be willing. Come on, everybody, say. the devil talk you out of doing what you know you need to do this morning. Come on. If you drifted distance away from God, make today be your day. Come on back home to us. No matter where you've been, come on back home. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you.
today. Take it all to the altar. Thank you for your sacrifice, God. Thank you for sacrifice. Don't let nothing be in front of God. I want you to think about your life. Think about yourself right now. Make sure you're where you need to be with God right now. This is Resurrection Sunday. And God is looking to resurrect a lot of things in your life. But before the resurrection, you have to have commitment. You have to have commitment. And let this Sunday be the Sunday that you commit everything to God. Take the wood, take, take your problems, take everything to the altar. And let God be your provider today. Give him your body, give him your soul, give him everything. Pastor, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody together, let's say thank you. Say it again. We thank you so much. Amen. And you were preaching, preaching. Amen. Yeah, that's what he was doing. He was preaching, preaching. Amen. When he talked about running, I almost took off on y'all. How many of y'all gonna run with me? Amen. All right. So the next time he preached, when, he, when I take off, you better run with me. If I'm up here by myself, I'm gonna get every last one of you to raise your hand. But how many of you had a great time in the Lord today? Amen. And if you haven't placed membership here, you need to come on, come on, just come on right now. This is the place where God wants you to be. If you're one of those CML people that come on Christmas, Mother Day, and Easter, hey, hey, you come on, just come on and place membership. Just come on today. Don't listen, God is talking to you today. He's 
you're not here by accident. You're not here because you want to make mama proud and want to be here for daddy and everything. You're here because God wants you to be here. You're here because you're supposed to be here and you are here to give your life over to Jesus Christ. And because of this great, amazing sermon about Jesus Christ, we have one who says, I want to confess my faith in Christ and be baptized. Amen. I'm going to ask Ashley Millen. Did I say it right? Just Ashley. Okay. All right. All right, Ashley. Hey, how are you today? It's good to see you. Amen. I'm going to ask you a very important question. I'm going to ask you a very important question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. I believe that you do. And I want you to know that same confession brought death. It brought pain to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But it's going to bring life to you today. This is the best thing about baptism. Everything you've done, when you go down that water, God forgets. And he puts his spirit inside of you. And all he wants you to do is live for him. And that's a good deal. I, I think it's a good deal. And so what he wants you to do, not only confess, but he wants you to commit yourself to him. And do you commit to being a disciple for Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. I know that you do. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take you and you're going to be baptized. You're going to receive the spirit of God. All of us in here, we have all struggled with some things. But guess what? We're going to make sure that our faith is right so that way we can show you how to have faith. And, and so that way you can uh, teach someone else how to have faith. So just know that God is with you right now. Amen. Amen. We're going to take you now. Amen, amen, amen. We have several who has responded and they need prayer. And I'm going to read their names and excuse me if I mispronounce or do not articulate correctly. Uh, we have Cece Harris. We have Sister Lakeisha Smith. We have Camilla Woods. We have Dolores Howard. We have Teriana Standard. We have Rainey McClanahan. We have Sarah Mayberry. We have Willie Key. We have Chef Kevin Cooper. Uh, Aubrey Banks. We have Bree Donald. And we have April Moore. And from those who are online, we have Nicole Thornton, Donnie and Earlene Webb. Wanda Mitchell, April, John, and Maya Desmond, Kiki Jones and family, China Williams and family, Scotty Washington, Bonnie Lewis and family, Sherry Stern, Demetrius McCready and family, Beverly Davis, and Bethany Williams and family. But before we go to God in prayer, I want you to right now put yourself in direct confrontation with God. I want you to ask yourself, are you in the right relationship and fellowship with God? Because just showing up on Sunday is not enough. Just because we dress up, that isn't enough. But right now, I want you to think about where you are with God. I want you to really think about where you are. And if you're in that audience and you're struggling, I want you to come. I want you to come on down. If you're in the audience and you're like, man, I just don't know what to do anymore. Well, I want you to know, come on down because God is going to help you do what you need to do. And if you're just in the audience and you feel like you're all alone, just know that you're not alone. I'm going to ask the praise team if they would just... Uh, continue to sing a little more because I feel that, you know, the Holy Spirit wants somebody else in here to understand that it's all right. It's okay. We got time. Amen. We got time today. We got time for you today. We have time for you. But most of all, God has time for you today. So just think where you are with God right now. And if you need to come, if I need to come get you, I'll come with you. Because you're not in this alone. You're not in this alone. You're not by yourself and you have victory 
in Jesus Christ. Let's bring it all to the altar right now. This might be your last day. You want to give it to him. You want to give it to him right now. Let this be the day of your salvation. Let this be the day that you say, hey, I gave it all to the Lord. Let this be the day you say, Satan, no more. I can't. You can't have me no more. Because I give you my body. I give you my soul. I give you my life. I give you my kids. I give you my job. I give you everything, Lord. I'm bringing it all to the altar right now. Because it's all about you right now. Is there someone else? We had someone come. Just come on. Just come on. God is with you. God wants to be with you. Come on. Bring your family. Bring everybody up here to the altar. Because God is with you. God is with you. If you don't know where to turn, I want you to come on down. God is with you. God is with you. He's with you. He's with you through your tears. He's with you in the pain. Don't you know if you come down, as Doc said, while you're coming down on the other side of the mountain, God is providing a ram. God has a ram, but he can't give the ram if you don't move. If you don't move, he can't give the ram. So while you're coming on down this side of the mountain of your problems, let God have that ram waiting for you. Family problems, God can handle it. Marriage problems, God can handle it. Job problems, God can handle it. Individual problems, God can handle it. God can handle it. There's nothing that he cannot handle. Because he's God. All because he is God. He is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Amen. We have Sister Monica Weeks who's asking for special prayers and we have Naisha uh, who's asking for prayers. Is there anyone else? Never live with regret and never die with regret either because this could have been the day God gave it to you. Amen. Uh, it's Mariah Anderson, if you would, would you please stand? That's what I said, Marion. What, what are you talking about? That's what I said. I'm sorry. I butcher names. I'm so sorry about that. And you wrote Marion on here too. So you know, I was just wanted to see if that was you. Okay. She would desire to place membership here with us. We thank you so much. Uh, and this is your new pastor. And we are your new church family. Everybody way better. Amen. And we thank you. What we're going to do, we're going to take you. Uh, to the back and just get some information about you and everything. Thank you very much. Yeah, get your purse. You got to get your purse. You got to get your purse. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? This is your day of salvation. This is your day. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. It's always good to be around the saints of God. And don't go back to your situation after you deal with it by yourself. You don't. Take God with you. Take God with you to your situation. See what he does. 
great time today, didn't you? Amen. Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. To Adonai, our King, we bless your name today. We thank you, Lord, for going through all those trials on Thursday. Being beaten on Thursday night, they did it privately Lord they didn't want everybody to know what was going on and they were beating you on Thursday night Lord they betrayed you on Thursday then on Friday Lord they crucified you on Saturday Lord you were in the grave and didn't know what was going on but then Lord on Sunday you got up with all power in your hands. And it was not because of anything that you had done. You did that for all of us that are sitting here right now. And we just want to thank you for Thursday. We want to thank you for Friday. Thank you for Saturday. And we thank you for Sunday. So on Monday, we about to go tell everybody what you did for us the rest of the week Lord we just appreciate everything that you've done because you were the ram that was caught in the thicket for our sins and we just want to say thank you now Lord I ask a special prayer upon the young lady who has decided to give her life to Jesus Lord I ask you to bless her Lord and you be with her allow her to see other children of God walking like children of God allow her to see us Lord with great faith allow her to see us with tears but allow her to see us with praise Lord just be with her life and bless her and just watch over her I ask you to be with the person who decided to place membership that you will bless her and allow her to use her gifts and talents here for your cause and for your Christ I ask you now, Lord, to be with every person who had the mindset and had the boldness to write their name on a piece of paper, Lord. Because it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage, Lord, to put your name down and let people know that you're struggling, to let people know that you need prayer. And now, Lord, please give them the same bravery, Lord, to go face whatever they're dealing with, with you. Allow them to keep their head up, Lord, because there's no way you can catch a blessing if you can't see it. So help them, Lord, to keep their eyes open and looking for you in every situation because it's amazing how when we look for you, you will be the author and the finisher of our faith. I ask you, Lord, to be with those who did not come, Lord, and they're, they're, they got to go home, Lord, and they got to deal with it again, Lord. I ask you to watch, just watch over them. Whatever they have to face, allow them to face it with you. I ask you, Lord, just continue to be with our pastor. I thank you for the amazing anointing you have on his life. Just continue to touch him and watch over him, but put guardian angels, uh, angels around him, Lord. 
so that he will be all right, Lord. I ask you, Lord, just to help us, Lord, that we will always see you, not our situation, not our circumstance. Let us always see you because we know it's only you that can make everything else all right. Now, Lord, as we close this prayer, but never do we close from being in your presence, we just want to say thank you. I said we want to say thank you. We just want to thank you, Lord, for getting us through that last storm and allowing us to have a little sunshine. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us that are in storms to recognize that, guess what? This storm cannot stay here always. As the Bible said, it came, but it came to pass. And just bless us, Lord, that we can always see you and that we will worship you before we go, while we're in, and even after we get out. Let us continue to always have you in the forefront. And we know today, Lord, that you were glorified, your son was magnified, and all your people were edified. And we just want to say thank you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let everyone who knows the Lord say amen. upon your confession. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for the remission of your sins. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Now say amen like you've been blessed today by the word of God. Amen. As the great poet Ice Cube said, today was a good day. Amen. Today was a good day. I see you all in your Easter outfits and everything, and I know you want to get with your families and have the kids have their Easter egg hunts. Uh, please do not forget that we do have Easter bags for uh, the uh, children. <laughs> children in the back, amen. I will be back there making sure none of you adults try to grab some eggs, because I'm going to snatch a bag from you, amen, amen. But we, Pastor, we thank you. We thank you all for being here. Hey, let's all stand right now. We'll have a, a verse of a song, and we know this song very well, and then we will go home. As we leave, we carry your assurance by your spirit, by our hearts one, that from this moment, from this moment we will share our beings and our give love to all, reach the laws, lift your leg again. We get comfort in the world As we lift up our grave Our 
hearts and holy Y'all, it's Resurrection Sunday, so let's say this loud and proud. Father, help us this week that in everything we do, we will point up to praise you, point and watch over us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, see y'all later. Happy Easter. Amen. 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 Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, it is our prayer that something was done or said today that will cause you to want to have a closer walk with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to connect with our ministry or uh, get any questions that you have answered or if you want to know anything about the ministries that we have to offer uh, if you'd like to give to the ministry uh, whatever it is our information is here at the bottom of the screen uh, feel free to contact us we'd love to hear from you we also want you to subscribe to all of our social media uh, channels our YouTube our Twitter our Facebook our Instagram that information is here as well thank you for worshiping with us today we were glad that you were here, but we hope this is not your last time. Hope to see you again real soon.